Okay, today I'm working on this sharp. Okay, today I'm working this sharp LCD 32 DH66E, 32 inch full HD LCD television. The fault today with it is. Uh, we have a power indicator, but uh, nobody's home. It's just kind of staying on. Just got blank screen, power indicator is lit up. If you press the button on the side of the set, where is that? Here. You can turn the indicator off and you can turn it back on again. Um, if you get the remote control uh, and uh, press buttons, the LED does wink, indicating it's receiving remote control instructions. But that's it, nothing else happens. It just uh, sits there. And occasionally you hear it clicking from a relay inside the set. Um, this fault is reasonably common on these models. And uh, not many people have been able to figure out what it is, but basically I think I figured it out. And there's a 3.3 volt supply on here. This is including the sharp service tip. 3.3 volt supply there, and uh, that drops. Uh, that's currently measuring about 2.4 volts, which is not very good. And uh, let's turn the one. you can see the board there. There's a switch mode converter. There you've got an inductor, a diode, an output capacitor, and a switcher. Oh, I see. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just hit that area with some freeze spray and we can see what the set does. Okay, so what I'm using is air duster cans. You can buy these in the UK from Poundland. They're a pound each for a 200ml can. It's pretty cheap really compared to the stuff on eBay which is about 5 quid for a 500ml can. Um, anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is the set is currently powered up. I'm going to apply freeze spray to this area and we're going to see what it does. Yep, when you reverse a can of compressed air, uh, the, the um, refrigerant comes out. So you essentially get freeze spray for free. Well, not free, it's expensive. So I'm just going to wait and it should. I'm lucky to turn on. Power in here quickly. Yeah. Um, if it does that flashing thing, what you've got to do is you've got to turn it off and on again. Um, with the uh, power button. So it will re-attempt its power on cycle. There you go. It's now fired up. It's failed to receive broadcast, but there's no antenna connected. So, um, the fault, I will include a little bit of the schematic in the sharp service tip, but there's also a link to the schematics. Basically, there's a little um, capacitor on there, on the SS pin of the LV5805 chip. The LV5805 is a switch mode controller. Anyway, um, this fault is caused by, well there's a capacitor on the soft start pin of that chip there. Um, soft start pin SS. The job of the soft start pin is to start the output of the converter slowly, so it ramps slowly upwards. And this is to limit inrush current, so when the TV turns on, it doesn't start drawing tons of current from the power supply, which can cause some problems for the power supply. Anyway, what happens is um, that capacitor becomes leaky for some reason or other, you know, who knows why. Uh, but um, it fails. And when it becomes leaky, it can't, the soft start voltage can't rise because it's only got a very low current charging. It typically you've got a few microamps. And so the current starts bypassing 
the capacitance and the voltage never rises. Now what you'll get with these sets, if you sit really patiently for like 30 minutes just pressing on and off button, you can eventually get to turn on by pure chance because that capacitor certain situation happened that allowed it to uh, reach the proper voltage. But 90% of the time it won't turn on and this will slowly degrade, the set will start getting worse and worse and worse. Um, in particular, uh, this problem also happens with Panasonic plasmas. Um, uh, not that particular model, I haven't, uh, they didn't have that issue, but a friend of mine has fixed two other very similar models uh, with the same issue. And it's caused by uh, the capacitor on the power supply board regulating the soft start pin of one of the chips uh, failing, leaky. And that causes a 10 or 2 blink symptom as the voltage does not rise to the correct level. It's exact, well on this one, uh, what you get is a continuously blinking LED after some time which indicates a general communication failure. Um, oddly, uh, there is an error code for 3.3 volt fail, which is uh, two, two red blinks and then when you hold the menu button you should get three blinks on OPC LED. Uh, but that is not um, observed on these, so I'm guessing that the 2.4 volts that that produces is not enough to trigger the error detect. It's it's not low enough to trigger the error detect, but it's still high enough. But it's still low enough that the uh, board cannot work. Obviously, 2.4 volts on the 3.3 volts not good. I'm just going to measure that quickly, um, just to get a quick observation of the fault at hand. Okay, set is operational at the moment. You can see the backlight is lit and there's an LED flashing on uh, the control on the main board. Um, just check the 3.3 watt and you should be able to see 3.327. Uh, that's good, it's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the set and I'm going to plug it back in. Okay, backlight's off. Set unplugged. Use that meter. Plug it back in, and what I've noticed is usually when you turn them off and on, they uh, stop working. And you can see now we have 2.35 volts there. I'm going to freeze where this area. You should notice it starts rising once the uh, conductive freeze where evaporates. Sometimes it may require the uh, set to go through like a reset cycle as such. There you go, uh, shot 3.32. It's just got a little reset cycle. Uh, now, two green LEDs up here have lit up, and the backlight should shortly turn on, indicating the set is now operational. Uh, second. There you go, backlight's on. Set is now operational. Um, so, there's a little capacitor on there, I'll get the reference, I'll put it in the video, um, which is causing that fault. Uh, some other things uh, with these sets. When I was initially testing it, I had this cable unplugged. Okay? And I thought, well, you can do it every other TV, just unplug the LVDS, the set won't complain, you just get no image on the screen, you get backlight, no image. Nope, not sharps. If you unplug the LVDS on a sharp, you get a 2.5 error code, that is, 
two blinks and then if you hold the menu key you get five on the OPC LED um, which can be a little confusing but uh, it's essentially related to uh, uh, some kind of error detect for some reason they have an error detect for LVDS missing I don't know why they need it simply a blank picture should have been sufficient um, interestingly um, yeah you don't get a 3.3 volt error on these when that, that 3.3 volts low. Um, I think it's not low enough to trigger the error but still high enough uh, it's, it's not it's not low enough to trigger the error but it's low enough to stop it functioning properly. Also interestingly if you look on the internet a few other people who had a look at this problem always goes to 2.4 volts when the problem occurs. I don't know why. You know, 2.3, 2.4 volts, pretty much fixed. There's no 1.8, there's no 1.7, there's no 2.5, 2.9, whatever. It's always that 2.4 volts. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's like the threshold of minimum operation, maybe slightly higher than that in the set will actually work on that low 3.3 volts. Um, the first thing the 3.3 volts goes for is a little 2.5 volt regulator. So obviously, you've got to have more than 2.5 volts for a linear regulator like that to operate. So uh, it might be related to that threshold voltage of that voltage regulator, perhaps. Something to do with that. Um, other than that, I don't know. Uh, some other interesting things. We have a CPLD. Uh, very rare to find a CPLD in a piece of consumer equipment. Um, can you see the LEDs on it? When it's operational, you just do kind of funky pattern like that. I think that's some kind of internal, uh, there's two desynchronized communication interfaces there. And that LED there blinks continuously regardless of fault or not. It, you should have seen in the fault video, it just blinks continuously. Um, this is a very very well built TV. I mean, it is stunningly well built. The heat sinks for a 32 inch LCD are enormous. I mean, I don't have a pass I here to compare at the moment, but I've got a 32, uh, 42 inch Restel uh, set, and the heat sinks are so thin and pathetic in comparison to this. It just boggles your mind, really. Uh, quality capacitors ever at United Chemical, Nishicon, and Rubicon. Uh, the mainboard layout is superb. Interestingly, that chip there is for the Freeview. Um, but it's very rare to see a heatsink Freeview processor, and I noticed it's hooked into the HDMI bus. So I thought, oh, does this set have a uh, Freeview HD, which is high definition over the air Freeview? Unfortunately, it does not. When it was released in Russia and some other countries, it did have support for high definition Freeview, but our country always being behind the times a little on broadcast TV. Um, uh, Freeview HD wasn't out at the time so it doesn't support that even though it has all the technology in there to actually do it there is no capability of, for Freeview HD uh, probably because there's a minor difference in the Freeview HD standard that Sharp would have to program into it and they'd rather sell you a new TV to be honest um, now uh, there's several of those LV5805 chips and they also have soft start capacitors of the same value and it confuses me that that one always appears to be the one that fails um, whereas these do not fail apparently so um, I'm probably going to replace all three of those 6.8 nanofarad capacitors and the sharp technical bulletin says to replace it with 68 nanofarad, 10 times bigger um, but the value of the soft start capacitor really isn't critical. Um, all it does is affect the time it takes for that rail to come up. So you could replace it with a one microfarad capacitor as long as the TV has long enough, um, gets a long enough time to boot up. That should be absolutely fine. Um, what would be the uh, if you put a really huge capacitor on there, it might not uh, start quick enough, and the set would just power off. You know, thinking nothing's right. So 68 nanofarad, 100 nanofarad should be fine. Don't put a thousand microfarad or whatever you want on there. Don't put one microfarad on there. I, don't, I think that might actually be too much. Um, the tolerance on soft star pins is simply plus minus 30 percent anyway. It's not very precise. Anyway, so that's a little repair. Uh, this applies to many other sharp models. I'll include the full list in the description. Um, 
and it's a very common issue blighting these main boards. But I'm now going to have a nice TV for my bedroom, 32 inch full HD. I picked this up for £29 plus fuel cost, um, which is a bargain price for what this set is. It really is fantastic. Uh, yeah, picked up faulty, of course, um, as I do for all my electronics nowadays.